And what happens in Acts chapter 8? Okay, and then? Persecution starts and then? Okay. What, hap what happens from verse 26? Okay, Philip, Philip goes and meets the Ethiopian and does what? He finds the Ethiopian, uh, it says eunuch there, uh, eunuch, perhaps, see, see these guys uh, were deliberately, some people were deliberately castrated so that they can focus all their attention on running the government and running the state, so that they will have no distraction, they won't be married, they won't have a family, they won't have kids. So that, that's the context of Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, um, and uh, this minister was reading what? Okay. And then uh, what does the Bible say? Uh, Philip. Okay, I, I, I want you to read one scripture there. 35. Acts 8.35. Acts 8.35. Can you read that please? Okay. Mm -hmm. Beginning with that scripture, he told him. Okay, he began. He began from right from that scripture, and he preached Jesus to him. Now, it has been my desire to actually do something similar. Uh, to begin, you know, go to go to a, a, a seeker from another faith, and use Philip's approach. Begin with the book of, uh, Philip's approach was he was reading the book of Isaiah and uh, Isaiah, I mentioned this briefly in my message the other day, uh, the writer with the best vocabulary in the Bible, vocabulary, most different words used, most, the author who used most different words in the entire Bible, all, all the different authors. Uh, one of the, it's called the grandest book in the Bible. A man who used that book to lead a person to Christ in the New Testament age. In fact, after Jesus died, rose again and uh, in the New Testament. So we can do that in several ways. So, and this is something that uh, we can do. We can walk up to a person who doesn't know Jesus, and this person perhaps possesses a Gideon's Bible, or we've given him a copy of the Bible, and we can actually share the gospel. This same style, you can, this is soundly scriptural. And that's what your chapter is about. So uh, let me just take you through a few scriptures. So you, both of you sitting together, and both of you start talking, and uh, let's say that uh, then you take him to the book of Isaiah, and uh, what's the first thing you'll tell your friend? Okay, you're going to read the scripture together. The first thing you'll say is that there's a God out there who loves you. Okay, and uh, how do we understand? L you say, let's read Isaiah 54 and verse 10. Can you read that please? Isaiah 54 and verse 10. Isaiah 54 verse 10. Yes. The mountains may depart, the hills may be removed, but my kindness will not depart from you, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord. So, you know, when you read this scripture with a person who doesn't know Jesus, so you, you, he and you, and you know, he can explain to him that there's a God who loves you. The mountains may be gone, but this God loves you. Okay, that's a good start. Okay. And then, uh, from there you can go on to the next, uh, next scripture. I want to make this brief. You can, even in this, there is a long route and a short route. I'm taking a short route today. Uh, okay, then next scripture. Turn to Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Okay, that's the second scripture you read with it. Okay, what is it? But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And you have sins of hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. So there's a God who loves us, but the, what's the second thing? You Both of you read the scripture together. The second thing, what do you understand? That sin separates people from God. There's a breach, there's a problem here. And uh, if he says, no, I don't think I'm a sinner, you just have to take him. But you know what the Bible says in, the, in this very same book, the book of Isaiah? Uh, Isaiah chapter 53 and uh, look at uh, look at verse uh, 
6. Isaiah 53, verse 6. This is the third scripture. Okay. All we like sheep have gone away. All we like sheep have gone away. Un underline the word. If you have an highlighter, a hot pink a highlighter or yellow highlight highlighter, just uh, all have, gone all on. of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. So, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, the third thing we learn, all of us have sin. All of us have sin. Okay. Now, uh, what did, so this is the problem. Now, what is the solution? Right there in the very same chapter. Right there in the very sa same chapter. Look at verse 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Yeah. Yes. I like the scripture, uh, I think the enemy says, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. So, we, all, we are all on the search for peace. You know, we might try drugs or sex or alcohol or friends or Facebook or, you know, anything, anything, anything under the sun, okay, uh, to get peace. But the, the scripture says the, the, the punishment that brought us peace came upon Jesus. Who died for us on the cross so that that's why that's why Jesus came and here you can do a little bit of a, uh, explanation uh, and uh, if you want to elaborate you, there's one more scripture you can perhaps uh, read before this and that is Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 maybe this scripture you can I, I will read before this Isaiah 9 6 what is that for for unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a, a child is born. Unto us a son is son given. Is given. And the government shall be his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. So you can just mention Mighty God became flesh. He came down. Read that scripture. And his name, he will be called Everlasting Father. He was born. In fact, Pastor Walson explained that brilliantly today. He was born to a woman, but he was actually, what is his name? He is the everlasting father. Everlasting father was born to a woman, an ordinary woman. Was a, but he was actually, he was, he's not a, he's a baby, but it, that baby is a everlasting father. There's never a time that Jesus never existed. So he's very different. He's unique. Now, he's a unique God. He's not like any other baby who came into this world. There's no one else like Jesus, everlasting Father. So there's some space for talking about the uniqueness of Christ. In fact, you can do this before. And then, what? why did he come for? To die. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Okay, so what should we do now? What should we do now? It's very simple. And we can... Uh, okay, now, uh, what should you do now? Uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah 1, 18. What should you do now? Come now, yes. Let us reason together. Let us reason together. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They, as as snow. they, are, red like they are red like crimson. They shall be as wool. Like crimson. They shall be as wool. Okay. Isaiah 1, 1 18 says, What does it say? Come now, not tomorrow. not when it, Because tomorrow may be too late. We don't have our life you know, because of su sudden death. Because the Holy Spirit can stop speaking to us. Because Jesus can come back the second time. You can talk about the second coming. These are three reasons why you can't procrastinate. Because you, you can suddenly die. The Holy Spirit may stop speaking to you. Or Jesus can come back the second time. And after that it's too late. So come now. Let us reason together. Come, come, basically come to Jesus in repentance and faith. Okay. But if we reject Jesus. Okay there's a consequence. And that's the last verse of the book of Isaiah. What is that? Isaiah chapter, Isaiah 60, 6 and verse 24. In fact, Jesus quoted this. Isaiah 66 and verse 24. What is that? Okay. The dead bodies of the people who have transgressed against me or sinned against me. 
the worms will not die the fire is not quenched there there shall be an abundance of all flesh jesus uses very same words in mark's gospel to talk about hell so who goes to hell those who reject jesus those who say a final no to jesus and as i say those who pole vault over the cross okay jesus is cross is like a barricade to hell that's what isaiah predicts but you say no to jesus and you jump over the cross where will you land in eternal ever burning hell it's a place of conscious conscious torment we learned that in one of our theology class, classes the worm will not die the person will not die and the the worm feasting on that person also will not die the person will not die and the the worm also will not die so it's a, it's a it's a it's a imagery for eternal conscious punishment but none of us need to go there because jesus has already paved the way so uh, some of the things that i ask is why do you want to live in a living hell living hell no peace suicidal thoughts depression anxiety anger why live in a living hell and go to a literal hell that's the sad story of our world that's why we have evangelism today because we live in a world of living hell people are in a living hell people are popping up some anti depression spell speak sleeping tablets their life is a hell for them people live in a living hell and they are heading towards a literal hell but there's a there's a remedy there's a remedy there's 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 Jesus who died on the cross and all people need to do is to come now and though your sin is like scarlet your sin may be unprintable but yet he can make that white as snow now uh, i am imagining that maybe i don't know what exactly the philip philip uh, the conversation philip had with the ethiopian you know but maybe something like this in this can you can actually add a few more verses i'm just taking a i just left out a few but isaiah is a fascinating book for evangelism so that uh, your the, the third part of this unit is not talking about just doing this you know how can you just sit with a person who is actually uh, receptive and lead him to the lead him to Christ and it's been my experience to do something like this uh, you know i remember doing this in my college sitting in an open terrace just outside our, our hostel in alaba uh, leading a student to Christ like that you, you never you, you can't imagine how open people are so the thing is we are, it's it, this course is a uh, is an encouragement for you to graduate from beyond giving okay gideon's bible and beyond giving facts no, sit with a person okay after having received the bible a non christian in front of you is receiving the bible can you sit with them and take him to the isaiah route of salvation and pray the sinner's prayer with him it's possible it's possible okay on that note i just want to close uh, uh, shall we just close our eyes and uh, i want to remind you that you will read the unit to yourself and answer all the questions and i will quickly summarize it when we meet on 29th so this is a uh, and what i shared the last 10 minutes is basically uh, the climax of that that unit sitting with a person and leading him to christ sharing the message of salvation so shall we pray it's my prayer that we will all attempt to do this if you try and fail you may be you will be disappointed but if you don't try at all you'll be doomed somebody said if you try and fail you may be disappointed but if you don't try at all you'll be doomed i want you to try try the reason many people may cry in eternal hell is perhaps the reason is perhaps we have not even tried to share the gospel with them so let that change i want to encourage you today all of all of these my precious friends here to attempt to share the gospel give a bible and sit with the person and you know take him through this isaiah route of salvation and that's sound is scripture that's what perhaps if you uh, that's what philip the evangelist did with the ethiopian we pray and finish dear heavenly father we thank you lord for this time we thank you for batch of 2016 we thank you lord for these students who have come today to study the course of evangelism today and we thank you for the lessons that we learned from your word as to how we can sit with a person with an open bible and share the gospel i pray lord you will give us opportunities and not just opportunities we will make we will lord 
we'll make it, we'll grab the opportunity that comes across to us during travels, Lord, in our neighborhood, wherever we go, Lord, we'll grab an opportunity to sit with a person and lead that person to Christ.